Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hope you guys are well. Can everybody hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up or a yes? Let's see. Good morning, you guys. Hello. Cool. Cool. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. If you can't, uh, let me know. And we're coming in clear for you. So, yeah, good. Thanks, Emily. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Hey, how are you guys? How's everybody doing? I'd like to sort of start off uh, the classes with a little bit of a check-in just to see how... Good morning to you guys, just to see how you're doing. We like to see before the classes if it's busy, if it's slow. Uh, so welcome, everyone. As always, just wanted to thank Backstage so much for creating this series uh, and for inviting me to speak with you guys every week. It has been an honor and a privilege to be writing articles for Backstage for years now. You guys can check out that database online. Super excited. So I know a lot of you guys over the weeks have come to watch uh, one of our Zoom classes live from all over the world. And my name is Joseph Perlman. We help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. We have online Zoom classes from beginner to working professionals and celebrity. And those of you guys who have watched the videos over the last weeks, months, know that at my studio, we believe you can launch your dream career faster with less effort when you're lit up with fun. Okay, you can launch your dream career faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun. And we welcome you guys to come watch those breakthroughs live every week from all over the world. You're all invited uh, afterwards to audit a class in one of my weekly Zoom classes, including the master class, a small group of our celebrity and series lead level actors. And um, I'll give you the website and the information later. And we're working with these actors on currently casting major film and TV auditions every week until they have an undeniable breakthrough transformation, a way to guarantee a win in the audition room. And I invite you guys to watch from anywhere in the world. So welcome aboard. And thank you guys again for being here and backstage. Thank you very much. So memorization. Uh, I, I believe every part of the process has to be fun or it's not working. I say this oftentimes in class. Great actors, you guys know the work is great because you feel it, not because somebody gives you commentary or you watch playback. You're sort of looking at the result of your work if you're looking at playback, but you know what great acting feels like. And the number one thing is fun. And if it's not fun, it's not working. How many of you guys can say that memorization is fun? Uh, I'm assuming that's why a lot of you guys are here, is how can we memorize faster with less effort and still have fun? And I'm going to show you guys how to do it, and I'm excited to make that easy. And it's um, a lot of it is based on Anthony Hopkins' uh, approach to memorization, which is which is super fun. So memorization can be fun, and I want to start with I want to start with a really fun quote from Tarantino, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Quentin Tarantino says, "You can't be fully in the scene." fully in the performance and also being an actor thinking about what the next line is. Does that make sense? It's going to pull you right out of that place. Uh, so you have to, you have to learn the lines cold. You have to learn them cold, like the alphabet by rote. And it's important that you do it for your auditions as well. Um, except if it's a cold read and we can talk really quickly about cold reads because cold reading is never just here's a script and go. Has anyone ever heard of the concept of a frozen cold read? It's abusive to actors to say, here's a script and go. It's like telling a writer, stick your pen on the page and start writing. Here's what a cold read is, and here's what a cold read isn't. A cold read is you are fully prepared, but you're not memorized yet. So memorization isn't something you have to worry about. And it's good we're talking about cold reads. A cold read is when you go in for an audition and they say, wow, you did a great job with Sarah, 
We'd like you to take Ellie outside. Take her outside for 20, 30 minutes. Just let us know what you need and then bring her back in. A cold read is never, here's a script and grow. Again, that's abusive. It's an abuse of power. So the only time you should be able to take a note really fast is let's say you're on set and you get a quick little, um, a quick little line change or a quick little adjustment then you can kind of take it fast. So if someone ever pressures you to start acting before you've prepared it, you need to remind them what it means to be a professional. And you can say something like this. One of my uh, wonderful friends, actor clients, Eric Pasoja said this. Simply say, hey, listen, you want me to do well? I want to do well? I'm going to take this outside for a little bit. Remind them what it means to be a professional. And if you're an actor who's going out for 100 major roles a year, which is what we help our clients to do. How do you compete for every role you're right for? Um, you are lucky if you ever see maybe like three cold reads. So you shouldn't harp on cold reads. There's no need to take a class dedicated to cold reading. Um, what you can do in 20 minutes of preparation is amazing. Uh, so that's what a cold read is. So Quentin Tarantino said, you can't be an actor and really be in the scene and be thinking about what your next line is. You don't want your head to get tied or tethered to anything when you're acting. So let's first talk a little bit about, you know, what the qualities of like re being fully memorized are. You want to memorize like the alphabet. You want to memorize something like you don't have to think about it. So you can be in neutral. I use the example a lot of the time for actors sort of like being in neutral like seaweed at the bottom of the ocean. One of the things that's really important to talk about is, it is true, you know, you guys are mentioning it in some of the comments. If somebody tells you, start acting, and you don't have any time to look at that and you've never seen the piece and it's a brand new character, that is abusive. And you need to let somebody know that that's, a you know, in the right way or simply excuse yourself. So. Why do we not want to memorize in a certain way? Why do we not want to memorize our lines, saying them in a certain way, planned delivery? I think a lot of you guys probably know this, but you get locked into that. If you don't memorize in neutral, okay? Think about the way we talk in life, you guys. We don't, we don't, we're not sort of like controlling the words we're saying as we're saying it. The words are coming out like boat wake. Uh, the emotion is put forward. Remember, 90% of what isn't in the text, that's what your responsibility as an actor to show people, make choices about what you feel and what you mean. A lot of actors make the mistake of emotionalizing the text, thinking they're doing justice to the writer, but they're not doing justice to the writer. Because in life, you guys, in our lives, how often do we say everything we feel or mean? Not often. A lot of the times it's even greater than 90%. So our choices need to be grown, you know, grown off of the writing, but our job is not to emotionalize the writing. And here's one of the most important things when you first get a role, you guys. You need to let go of your idea of how to play him or her. Let go of your concept of how to play her because you can never solve a problem of how to play the character in your head or on a piece of paper. It has to be discovered, okay? And it's the same with memorization. Don't get locked into a fixed delivery or way of doing the lines um, because it's going to come out different every time. Every scene is going to be different. Joaquin Phoenix talks about this. You don't want to know how it's going to go, uh, just like life. So, you know, yeah, let go of your idea. And, and the beautiful quote that I've mentioned over the weeks from Stella Adler encapsulates it, per encapsulates it perfectly. She said, facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts are death to an actor until fed through imagination and become experience, okay? Facts are death to an actor until fed through imagination and become experience. And these facts are these thoughts, these ways, these you know ways of thinking about how to do the character. There was a really fun story that Joaquin Phoenix told as he was preparing for the Joker to play that role, which was an awesome, dangerous performance. He's what I would consider a dangerous actor, as is an actor like Laura Linney 
Uh, there are many dangerous actors. Parker Posey is another actor I, I think is a dangerous actor. And Joaquin Phoenix had an idea. He talked about, I had an idea about how to play the Joker, had an idea maybe about the lines. And it was some weeks into shooting that he and director Todd Phillips both agreed that it wasn't working because he was stuck on this idea instead of discovering it in the moment. And he said, when you guys have these ideas, these, oh, I'm going to deliver the line like this, because we're talking about memorization here today, of course. But when you have an idea, Joaquin says, your ego really loves it. Your ego thinks it's awesome. But then when you actually get there, reality happens and everything changes, just like in life. You know, you can prepare all you want for something and then reality comes in and, and a whole bunch of other things happen. So let's dive back into the, to the process here. Um, and yeah, so you want to memorize in neutral like the alphabet. So here's a, here's a secret. Memorization is not about remembering the words, okay? Not about remembering the words. It's the way you memorize a script can directly impact your performance. So I know actors who have tried all these sort of like tested methods of memorization, but they get stuck on delivering these line reads. They start to memorize lines in terms of predetermined performance. And it's you know, it makes you less ma malleable. Jack Nicholson, before we get into the nuts and bolts of how do we do it, Jack Nicholson did something really cool. So before you memorize, instead of highlighting, I know we all like to grab the highlighter out and start highlighting our lines, but instead of highlighting, I'm going to show you another way to do it. And it's based on what Jack Nicholson does. So instead of highlighting, you're going to take your lines and let's say your line is Howard, you're gonna make a check mark right underneath the line, just like that. If your line is Howard, you're gonna make a check mark right underneath your name. And what's neat about that is your eye can easily track it. So when you're, when you're reading, if it's a cold read, or you need to come back to it, your eye can come right back to that check mark and it's right in line with your next line. So again, I'll show it to you guys again. Hopefully you can see it. Um, yeah, it's just a check mark right underneath the name. And it's really a great thing to do if you lose your place, you can come right back to it. So consider consider doing that. Highlighting can be a mess and you just have all this yellow all over the place. So that's what Jack Nicholson does. So here we go. Memorization, find a quiet place, okay? First find a quiet place. Read all the dialogue out loud, not the stage directions, all the dialogue out loud, including the other character's dialogue. Read it out loud, okay? And you don't want to emotionalize it. You don't want to act it out as you're reading it out loud. Read it in neutral. See what you're saying as you're saying it. So don't, don't get into doing a performance. Just, just sort of read it out loud and read read the entire script. If you have a whole script, if you have a booked role, or if it's an audition, read the audition size. I tell everybody in the classes and the coaching, guys, you never want to be professional auditioners. Traditional auditioning, get an audition, go into casting is like one way out of 20 to book a role. Okay. So don't get stuck on being professional auditioners. There's another dimension. There's another level to this game of the industry. And so here's how it would do. If I'm reading the lines, it's going to look like this. Hey, favorite office dude is Howard's line. And then Joel's line is Howard. So I'm going to read all the lines. Hey, favorite office do, dude, Howard. I believe this word is thrombosis, which would be a 542. I agree. Good, good. Because you entered it as a 651, which would be an embolus, which it's not. It might become one, but it's still not. Same copay, but still maybe. So I'm reading it just almost neutrally, like reporting it. I'm not emotional. I'm just reading it out loud without putting color on it. Makes sense? And I want to read it all the way through. I want to read the thing all the way through. And what, what happens is that when you first, when you read it all the way through, you are going to make a little line signifying you've read the piece all the way through. You're gonna make one little line on your page that I've read it all the way through. And then you're gonna read it all the way through again. Think about just your scene. If it's an audition, you're gonna read it all the way through out loud, your line and your reader's line, not emotionalizing it in neutral. And then you're gonna make 
another line. You're going to cross that. So that signifies that you've read it two times out loud. And then you're going to read it three times out loud and four times out loud. And you're going to make a pinwheel. And then you're going to close it with a circle. And you can see that. And that signifies that you've read it. That signifies that you've read it five times out loud. And I did a little, I did a little diagram, uh, which could be fun to see. Let's see if we can, we can show that diagram to you guys. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so it's going to look like that. And the goal is to get as many pinwheels on your script as possible. And there'll be a certain point, you'll see how many pinwheels it takes reading it out loud in order for it to be fully memorized. And those of you know who have done plays, what's so neat is doing this almost aerates the piece. Like I said, Anthony Hopkins does it, uh, reads every script he gets, the whole script about 200 times all the way through. And you know by the sixth performance, things are occurring to you that didn't occur during the first and second and third performances. And by the 30th performance, it was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't realize that. I can't believe I didn't understand that relationship. So it's going to aerate it. It's going to open up the whole piece for you. Uh, and it's really, really cool. And yeah, so you want to get as many pinwheels on there as possible. And here's the thing, you guys. Remember what I said, you cannot figure something out in your head. You do the pin, you do a line every time you read the whole thing all the way through, okay? You read the thing all the way through and then you draw your first line, okay? Then you read the thing all the way through and then you draw a second line. You don't draw a line after every line you speak. You read all of your sides all the way through and then you draw that first line, one, signifying I've read the thing all the way through. I read the thing all the way through again. I draw the other line, the cross line, all the way through. And then a third, and then a fourth, and then I close it in a pinwheel. I'm going to show it to you guys again, because I think the diagram is really important, if you can see it. Yeah. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a collection of pinwheels on your script, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of cool. It's going to look something like that. And you may find that it takes, I don't know, maybe it takes 30 times reading it all the way through, or maybe it takes 40 times, or maybe just after 20 times all the way through, you know, you're fully memorized. So what this does, instead of, you cannot solve any problem in your head. You guys, this process is about, you cannot solve problems in your head or think it through. You have to talk them out loud. That's what Stella Adler meant when she talked about, it has to be fed through imagination, facts until they become your experience. So when you talk it out loud, remember you guys, your words become your reality. What you say and how you feel is what you get in an hour tomorrow. So this is a process again, like everything that I do uh, in the acting uh, coaching in the classes of all the work should be talked out loud, never figure something out in your head. And you're almost this way memorized. It's like you're, you're, um, you know, it memorizes you. You don't have to do that work. So you're talking it out loud and you're reading it in neutral. Remember, don't get stuck into a line reading. Now, here's the test. So the test is this. How do you test for cold? One of the cool things you can do is, you know, get a partner. So you have a partner and you can do this without a partner. But if you have a partner, what you could do is take something. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something that you don't want to break, whether it's a, the best thing is like a tennis ball, okay? Um, and you're going to toss it back and forth and you're going to toss that ball. This is the test for truly memorize. And you're going to toss that ball with your partner, but you're not going to get stuck in a rhythm. It's very important. You don't get stuck in a rhythm. So you're going to move around. You're going to dance around. You're going to toss it sideways, but you want to try to keep it in control. And you're going to toss the ball and you're going to say your lines, okay? Okay. And you're going to say your lines and they're going to read the other person's lines. And you're going to toss the ball and you're trying to distract yourself with the ball. And now there are going to be times when it's all of a sudden your hand holds on to that ball. You know, your hand holds on. It's not freely letting it go. That is the moment where the line is still in your head. So when your hand holds the ball, you can't freely release it. 
That's where you're going to mark somewhere in your script on that particular line with a little circle. That line needs a little bit more work. I need to read it out loud a lot more. So I want to make sure you guys really get this. The test for coal. So tossing a ball, okay? You want to do it chaotically. You don't want to get into a rhythm because if you get into a rhythm, it makes it easier to think about what the next line is. The ball toss is trying to get you guys to, to like kick your, get that sort of kick, like inception. They got that kick out of their dream, that kick out of your head and toss it and just say your lines as fast as you can without emotionalizing it. And then notice when your hand is like, uh, when it holds onto the ball and it can't let it go. Oh, what is that line? And you're going to mark that in your script that needs a little extra attention. So what do you do when you don't have a partner? Well, you can do this ball toss exercise by yourself. Yeah, this is this is like no stress, zero effort, fun memorization where you don't tie your head up in a knot. And I can't wait for you guys to do it. I, I want to know like how many pinwheels it takes for you guys to fully memorize. And you can do it yourself. So what you're going to do is the same thing. You take that ball or that object and you're tossing it up and down. You're going to toss it and you're going to move around the room. You're going to toss it behind you and you're going to catch that ball and you're going to toss it up and you're going to say your lines, but you're going to move. You're not going to get into a rhythm with it. And then when you find yourself, ah, you're holding on to it. It's like, I can't let it go. Your hand, without thinking, your hand holding that ball is going to tell you when those lines are a little bit sticky and then you're going to mark it accordingly in your script. And you're going to know that you need to get a little bit more, some more of those pinwheels on there. Okay. So those are the two tests. And they, you have to really be, just distract yourself. Don't make yourself crazy. It doesn't require, none of this requires conver, uh, you know, concentration. It's like totally fun. And, you know, it's like hard to have a partner these days sometimes. So this is just as easily done doing it by yourself, doing it on your own is not second best to having a partner. Um, yeah. So, um, and one of the fun things you can do and what we're doing via zoom sometimes when you want to test with your partner is you can get somebody, uh, in a video chat, a zoom chat, and they can speak the other person's lines and you can speak, you can speak your lines. And what they're going to do is they're going to give you via video. They're going to, uh, do a number anywhere from one to 10. And you're going to, as you're doing your lines, you're going to have to say it one lines, 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 and they're going to flash another number and you have five. So they're distracting you by holding up, flashing up numbers. Uh, and if you want to make it really distracting, they can, on the other end, they can hold up a shape and you'll have to say circle as you're doing your line or triangle or heart. So they're giving you these distracting symbols. You're not doing it. They're doing it. And they're, and they're holding up numbers or they're holding up symbols. And as you're doing your lines, you have to say it. And then you'll find yourself when you get stuck and you stop and you freeze. That's where you put a little extra attention on your lines. And this whole process was born out of Anthony Hopkins reading every single script. Uh, he described 200 times out loud. Even if it's a whole movie, he's reading his lines Partner's lines, everybody's lines, even if it's a Shakespeare play, reading it out loud, it aerates it, it brings it into, takes it out of the head, out of the factual world, into imagination, and it helps to become, you know, helps to become your experience. This works for commercial auditions. This works for anything you have to memorize. It works for a TED Talk. I use this with folks who are delivering UN speeches, TED Talks. Anything you have to memorize, this works. And that exercise, and it's so simple, you guys. It's so simple. One of my favorite quotes is Seth Godin. And Seth Godin said, effort isn't the point. Stop efforting, you guys. Effort isn't the point. Impact is. If you solve a problem, whether it's delivering a great audition, a great performance, or memorizing the lines. If you solve a problem in three minutes, but have the guts to share it and implement it, it's art. And if you move 10,000 pounds of granite, sorry for your calluses, but you haven't made art, at least not art that someone's going to connect with. So sometimes I think we're all attached to these stories of suffering, like how memorization is painful. And it's like, you know, you know, it's going to hurt and it's going to take a long time. Well, it doesn't have to take a, take a long time. Again, there's a way to teleport to that memorization. So, you know, you may find that it takes like 
You know, you may find you takes two pinwheels and all of a sudden you're memorized, or you may find that you, you have, and every pinwheel represents five times you've read the whole thing out loud. And you may find that it takes a hundred times out loud and you're memorized. Don't judge how long it takes you. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you memorize with, with no effort simply by saying the lines. When you're saying the lines out loud, don't do it with sort of a dead head. Don't do it. Be distracted on a treadmill. Don't do it when you're, I want you to not, I want you to see what you're saying as you're saying it. Don't emotionalize it, but be present. So it's very important to be present. Does that make sense? You don't want to be somewhere. You don't want to be somewhere else. You want to be in the present moment. I don't remember who said this, but it was a great quote. It was your, your point of power is in the present moment. You guys, what's so amazing about what we do is that as actors, it doesn't matter where we are. We use nothing but the present moment and our bodies. And we are literally, we are pulling magic and wonder out of our bodies using nothing but the present moment and creating. And we're creating as we talk. I want to mention something really cool. You guys ever heard of the word abracadabra? Probably it's a magic word. Abracadabra, poof, you know, something happens. Well, abracadabra literally translates, I believe it's Hebrew, but it literally translates to, I create with my words. I use my words to create. And we use our words to create. I want you to use your words to memorize. I want you to use your words to, to, to create your best acting choices. Remember, your best acting choices you're never going to look at the text with glasses on and do some painful backstory exercise. And you're never going to figure out the most dangerous Joaquin Phoenix, Laura Linney level choice ever in your head. It has to be discovered out loud. And if you haven't, I welcome you guys to come to a free audit from anywhere in the world in one of our Zoom classes uh, next week, if you'd like to. And you're welcome to come to the masterclass and watch this process, watch the transformations unfold. It's possible in every working session to have an undeniable transformation or breakthrough where you feel, wow, you feel great. And if it's possible to do that, why are we not doing that? I think we're attached to these stories of suffering of how it takes four weeks and we have to drag a scene through four weeks of a class and then maybe six weeks of a class in order to come through it. I've talked to you guys about this before, but my mentor was a man named Jeff Corey. Um, he's not around anymore, but he was so influential to me. His roots came from, some of you guys, where do my, you know, where do the roots come? Uh, the roots of the work are come from Michael Chekhov, although we are so far expanded. I kind of consider the work we're doing on the outer sort of expanse of what's new and what's new and what's new. But Jeff Corey was so special to me. And he showed me, he was the sheriff in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. He was in almost all the villain in all the John Wayne movies. And he was a member of the group theater, but he was blacklisted during the blacklist. And it was so sad. He drove his family to Canada to leave the US. He fought in the war. And after the blacklist, he came back and John Wayne cast him in his uh, first film coming back. And Jeff Corey started coaching and, and teaching actors. And he worked with a young James Dean for Rebel Without a Cause. And he worked with uh, young Jack Nicholson and Steven Spielberg and Cher and Sean Penn and on and on and on. He coached John F. Kennedy uh, for speaking. And what was so cool was after my traditional training I moved to Los Angeles after New York University and doing some uh, studying at Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I came out and a family friend introduced me to Jeff and I, he had a studio in Malibu above his garage. And I went out to audition for him. I believe I performed a piece from Richard II, The Death of King speech, which is miraculous and fun. And I got into his class and it was every Tuesday and it was a small group. And it was the first time I ever saw somebody almost like they took a screwdriver to every performance and helped to just turn the screw and tighten it in every single working session. This man did more in one working session than it took weeks, months, weeks, days in other places. So it was like the first time 
I saw that like, wow, okay, you can actually transform and completely tune up a scene in every working session so that you can work on a new piece the next session. Uh, and, and that's what work should be like. If you cannot solve the problem, every scene, you guys, can be cracked in three minutes or less. But if you have a half an hour or if you have an hour, it's incredible. I've worked with actors in preparation for um, uh, Ridley Scott's last movie. I worked with an actor for about a year, year and a half in preparation for it. But if you get audition sides the night before, you know, it's possible to within an hour, 20 minutes to an hour, half an hour, depending on the sides, to make choices that are dangerous and brave, that stand out without screaming and guarantee a win uh, when you walk in the room. So just wanted to share a little bit of, you know, my history and uh, some of my background with you guys. I grew up in Boston, Brookline, Massachusetts, and um, all sorts of um, you know, fun and amazing things uh, brought me out here. So I'm happy to share this process with you. I just want you guys, every part of the process has to be and should be fun. And um, and if it's not, you know, something's not working. If it's not fun, it's a very binary thing to ask. Is it fun? And sometimes someone might challenge it and say, well, there's, you know, there are pieces that just aren't fun, you know, and I, I worked with an actor on a 12 Years a Slave some years ago, and it was one of the most intense moments of that movie. And that actor was on the floor, tears streaming out of her. You know, it, it, it was she was shaking with emotion. The tears are just a result. Um, it says tears in the script. You don't play that. You do emotions that are more interesting than that. And she was on the floor, and I said, I said, I have to know, was it fun? And she looked up, to, she looked up at me with anguish, and she said, yes. Is that wrong? And I said, no, it's wonderful. Remember, you guys, fun is not just like a kid's, like a birthday party with balloons. Fun means cathartic, empowered, invigorated, alive. You know, I always describe it like you just climbed Mount Everest and you feel like you want to die, but every pore in your body is saying, F yes. You know, it's that invigoration. It's why we do this, you guys. You know, what gets you up in the morning? What gets you up in the morning to do this? And I got to tell you, it was Ben Kingsley talked about this some years ago and an incredible, wonderful client I'm working with these days. Um, uh, Teo also described it. It's like we do this because it's like the best drug in the world. You know, it's like we do it because it makes us feel amazing, you know, and if we don't have a joy in the process, whether it's memorization or acting or next level of your career, which is there's a whole other level to the game. And I've talked about it in other videos. Um, you know, if you don't have a joy in the process, uh, you're not going to make anything. You're not going to get to where you want to go. And, and yeah, so just sort of I want to leave you with the invitation. Thank you again, to everybody for being here and also to Backstage for putting this together. You guys are wonderful. You are all invited to attend a free audit via Zoom, all of our classes. We've been doing classes for Zoom via years. It's not just a COVID thing. It's like, it is an amazing way to work with actors. Um, we're interacting and engaging with each other the way the producers, casting directors, directors have always looked at our performances. And the level of focus the level of focus is even more beautiful and intense than any in-person is. So come and join us. You can go to www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com, josephperlman.com, and reach out to us. And a wonderful studio manager is going to set you up with a free audit. Come and watch a class. Um, watch the breakthroughs. Uh, come and watch the masterclass. The masterclass is fun because we have literally some of the series regulars and stars of some of the biggest shows on Amazon and Netflix getting a workout in that class. Uh, it, it's We're all discovering together. It's not just some technique. I'm trying to wrap around people. We're trying to help you guys be the creators of your best technique. And we're using craft. But at a certain point, it's important to know that you have to throw it out the window. Your training is scaffolding. The scaffolding has to be kicked away before the best performance can emerge. You know, the most transformational performance can emerge. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to 
maybe answer any quick questions uh, about the memorization. Hopefully it was as clear as possible. It's really simple, but it requires some focus. It requires focus to be present when you're talking it out loud, okay? Don't talk it out loud in gear. Do it in neutral, okay? Like a news reporting, but just, you know, see what you're saying as you're, um, as you're saying it. And then mark it with those lines and five lines, and then you draw the fifth line is the circle, and it's a pinwheel. And see how many pinwheels it takes, and then test the memorization. Toss the ball. Toss it with a partner. Um, someone can distract you in a, in a video meeting, in a Zoom chat. And kick yourself out of your head, and then the point when your hand is sort of holding on, what is that line? That line is not fully memorized yet. Cannot wait uh, to continue the fun uh, next week. Uh, Thursday, 11 a.m. on another uh, YouTube live video hosted by the wonderful backstage, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time next Thursday. Uh, I do invite you guys to come and watch the transformations from anywhere in the world. And mostly you guys, I love you guys. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Please take care of yourselves. We are all in the same boat. If any, anyone tries to trip you out, and sort of act like they're somehow above you in this process, don't buy into it. We are all in the same boat. We are all connected, okay? Uh, be well, and yeah, be well. Take great care of your, yourselves, and I cannot wait to see you guys again soon. Take care. <clears throat>